Hi everyone, it is Beth with Flying by the Seed of My Plants and um, it's been 10 days since I took you around through the garden and in the last 10 days um, it has just grown so much. Um, I think on the last video my sweet peppers, I hardly had any on there and now I am getting the peppers, I'll show you that. My eggplant is grown, oh my gosh, like a couple feet. And now I'm getting a lot of tomatoes where they're actually getting larger. And today I'm also going to go ahead and fertilize everything. Um, and I have been fertilizing probably at least once a week uh, with a liquid fertilizer. Um, when things really looked like they were struggling, I did use the miracle Grow. Um, I'm not crazy about miracle Grow, but when your plants are mature, and you know, we were going through a drought, um, and it just looked like the plants were suffering, so I wanted to do something really quick. So I did go ahead and use the miracle Grow. So, but here today, I'm gonna go ahead and use, it's a fish fertilizer. Um, and I'm adding this to all my peppers, just everything. So, and I use the, the garden hose. It has a filter on it. Um, you know, because if you don't have the filter on it and you're trying to use something organic like this, you know, it has chlorine in your water, unless of course you have well water. But uh, if you have chlorine in there, it is just gonna kill all the things that you want. So anyhow, just wanted to share that with you. And I'm gonna, uh, talk more about my jalapenos here about freezing those and but anyhow let me go ahead and show you around because it's very exciting and also want to talk about some of my squash and what's going on and what I'm gonna do Abby get out of there okay so I'm back here by some of my patty pans and this is where I noticed a lot of uh, male flowers so the male flowers are the ones that don't have the fruit on it and the ones that are really tall, I'm just cutting those off and leaving a few for pollination. But this way, I don't want a lot of the um, energy of the plant going on producing the male flowers. So, If I see, uh, I'll leave a couple on, <sighs> it's like cut one next to every male flower, if that makes sense. Um, so right now, I did cut some the other day, and I noticed I am starting to get more females. So that makes me very happy, but of course you do have to leave some of the males on there just for pollination. So. Let me go ahead and turn this camera down for a minute. Okay, I'm going to try and give a better example of what I mean by trimming. Oops. Okay, so here is a male. That one looks like a male. It's another male. So... Okay, so this one looks like it probably opened this morning, but here is another one. So I'm going to cut off the ones that I already spent, number one. And this one I'm going to cut off. So there is a brand new one right here. So I'm going to cut that one off. So I'm still leaving this and also this one. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to cut that one off because I have this one that's going to open. And now hopefully there's a patty pan down here. I don't know if you can see that. It is. Oops, right here. So, and it looks like a lot of male flowers. There's a female right here. So I don't need all those males. So again, I'm gonna go ahead 
and cut those little babies. Because I want to promote the females. I'm not cutting all the males, but I do want to hopefully push it into developing more female flowers. That one's a male. That's a male. Cut this male. Okay, so now we're at another one, and these are all male flowers. Let me move this just so you can see. So I don't need all these male flowers. And I want it to start like that one's a female. Uh, here is a male. There is a male. I mean, the main thing we want is the fruit. But again, you do have to leave some male on there just to, to produce some of the um, female. So here is a female here. And when that opens, it has other males that can open for pollination. Cut this off here. There's a female. Oh, there is a male. I'm cutting that off. So, uh, hopefully by cutting these males, I'm promoting more uh, energy to produce females. So that takes care of that one. Let's go look at another one. Okay, in here, it's a frickin' jungle. Here is a butternut right here. Uh, some of the female, quite a few female flowers. Let me see if I got a lot of males going on. I mean, a lot of male flowers going on. Checking for, now oh, there's a female, female. Now oh, there's some more females, so. I am gonna cut some of the males off. And actually, you could save these and stuff them, the flowers. It's really like a jungle over here. Let's see if I get the camera down here. Oh, there's a lot of females in here. So far, I see three. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have quite a bit of the butternut squash. Okay, here's some of the uh, bell peppers. Here's this one, this one. And there's a couple more on here. And then There's more starting back over here. And one thing I'm glad I did do was thin this out. I have more bell peppers coming in here. And these peppers are, like this one is, oh, that's California Wonder. But some of these are like the colored ones. I have orange, yellow, um, yeah, those are just, oh my gosh, my cubanos are getting huge. Now we just had two and a half inches of rain. So 
Looks like I'm going to be stuffing a uh, Cubanelle again. And I just stuffed those with um, Italian sausage and then um, raisin. Okay, here's all the eggplant. And getting flowers. And just going crazy. As far as growing high, tall. And here are some of the cherry tomatoes. These are doing okay. These are more, they get more shade than they do light, sunlight. Um, they do get sunlight but not as much as some of the other ones so here is the black strawberries Ooh, what do we got here let's see what this mark is black cherry that is like my favorite not ready yet and then I have sun gold in here. Here is the climbing triple L crop. Climbing triple crop. So it's going up the trellis. Okay, over here I have uh, some of the basil. And that, you know, you just keep pruning off the top, pinching to keep promoting more growth because I do want to make a uh, pesto out of that. And then this is Queen of the Night. Look at those. Absolutely gorgeous. And then of course I mixed in uh, different sunflowers. And, oh, there's a butternut. I got several on this one, this one plant. And some of the uh, zinnias opening up. And then here I have uh, some of the kohlrabi. And the groundhog was picking on some of them. It looks like that one's almost ready to pick. And then I do have some beets back here. The Swiss chard, rainbow Swiss chard, and the groundhog was uh, munching on those. So, um, anyhow, here's all the potatoes, and they are starting to get flowers. And this one was one of them that was like looking almost like it was dead. Oh, that's over here. <laughs> Sorry, this one. So it is coming back. And then I have this one here, that one, that one over there, it's like done. Um, I don't know what happened to it. I have a feeling it just didn't get enough water. And then over here I have the large leaf basil. Oh, some cherry tomatoes I could pick over there. And then, look at this. This is in the tomato garden. Hopefully you can see all that. It's so bright out, I can't tell. But I'll take you in the tomato garden. So here are the San Marzanos. Look at how they grow, I just love those. And they're green, so they're still growing. Look at these. These are a beautiful size here. And then some more here. And down there.
These are called the Super Sweet 100s. I, you know, I don't know if they really taste super sweet to me, but I think the Sun Gold. Tastes a lot sweeter. Mm. Oh, that's a blueberry. That is the pineapple. And in here, the black strawberry. This is squash in, oh, look at that. The uh, acorn squash. This is in my in-ground tomato garden. So I wasn't sure what I had planted in here. So the acorn actually is growing like a bush. So I have a couple of those in here, I do believe. This one, it's all males. So I think I'm gonna be trimming some of these males off to try and promote the female. And the groundhog has not come in here yet that I have noticed. Here is Bonnie's best. Oh, battery went dead, of course. These are the early girls, but it is not growing very much. And I had an issue with this side of the tomato garden last year. So at the end of the season, I'm really gonna fertilize uh, or amend the side of the garden. Uh, here are the black beauties. So I'm really going to fertilize this side too when I do. Um, now this one's doing okay, but it is a cherry. It is the sun gold. These are delicious. Now see, last year I had my San Marzano's over here and they did not do well. Here's a Paul Robeson. It's struggling. Here's a beef steak. This is doing okay. Here's another beef steak. So, and here is, I think that's the Dr. White Chi. And that might be a Kellogg's right here. There's a Kellogg's here. Just a few small tomatoes, but hopefully, I don't know. There's a pineapple. It's getting to be a nice size. And black cherry tomatoes back in there. There's some more sun gold. If you guys have not tried sun gold, they are just delicious. And I planted several of these because now I can share it with people. Otherwise, they never make it out of the garden. Cherry mm. keep purple. Well, here's some more Paul Robeson. And here is a squash in here. You see if there's any females, so I can see what it is. Probably another butternut or a honey nut, one of the two. Which is great because that would be a winter squash, which is great for storing. Russet potatoes right here. Doing great. Also getting flowers. Zinnias and sunflowers. Amish paste. Look at the size of those. And they're still growing. So Amish paste is great for canning also. Somewhere there. And the cherry tomatoes.
Yeah, there's some gold in there. Mm. And also, if you noticed, I went ahead and I keep pruning them as they grow. So that's why it's opening up down here on the bottom of the tomatoes. It's really hot today, so once they get water, these guys will perk right back up again. This is typical on a hot day. Oh, I think I hear a groundhog. And silver slicers. And this is the uh, national pickling. And I want to make some garlic kosher pickles. Um, I don't have any pickle... Uh, what do you call that? So they stay firm. Gosh, I can't even think of the name of it right now. But anyhow, um, I put an order in and I should have it Thursday, so I want to go ahead and make some garlic kosher pickles. Awesome. Climb in the trellis. These are just gorgeous. The flowers are gorgeous. And they just started putting their beans out. So they're definitely not ready yet. But the flowers, they're starting to get all their flowers out here. This one, it's a patty pan type squash, um, but this is English custard. I could tell just by the way it's growing. So I am gonna cut this one and harvest it. And here are the pumpkins. Now, I went ahead and cut off some of the male flowers to try and push some of the female. Push the energy to making the female. Because right now, I think I only counted four. And there, there. That one, I got it unstuck. I'm not seeing any more female. So a lot of these males I'm gonna cut off. I just wanna it to focus more on developing female. Ooh, whoops, dang it. I just cut the trellis off of that one. <sighs> Me and my scissors. Yeah, because right now I only have four pumpkins, and that's exactly what I had last year. <laughs> and I have one, two, three, four, five plants. So hopefully I get some more uh, female. And then over here I did plant the Kajari, and so far the um, groundhog has left them alone. I'm going to go ahead and harvest all of those. I have not done that yet, so I was thinking they'd get bigger. And the detail hot pepper, i got to look that up to see if it goes to red. And then, of course, the egg, acorns in here. There's an acorn. This one's getting to be a nice size. And I know in the last video I showed you all the jalapenos, so I'm not going to drag you through there, but there's still quite a bit on there. So I do want to harvest those and freeze them. Okay, and this is where all my stevia was, and uh, that is going to all grow more. And I am going to do another one with the vodka. I just did a video on that yesterday on how to make the extract from the stevia plant. And so it sat overnight and it got a lot sweeter um, and that's after following what I did you know where you cook the alcohol out of it and because um, I put in two teaspoons like I did right after I made it and it was way too sweet so anyhow um, I do like it I like it a lot I like it better than the powdered what that's the one where I dehydrated the stevia and then did a powder out of it um, well, I just laid it to dry and then powdered it up, but 
yeah, I do like the liquid much, much better. And then here is, what do we got going in here? It is another squat. Oh, butternut. Oh, there's some down there. Um, I don't know if it's a butternut or a honey nut. But that's going on here. This is some pickling eggplant. That was a free seed from Baker's Creek. A friend uh, sent me those seeds. Uh, but it was marked as a free seed packet. And then, of course, all the flowers here are absolutely gorgeous. So, and this is where I harvested all my celery. I did a video on preserving that as well uh, with freezing. And then here is, now this I do believe is a carrot that went to seed. Um, so if that's the case, I could save these. And more carrots in here, which I have pulled some. I'm going to have to go through it again, but I do want, I'm going to plant some more. Um, I have empty spaces coming up. I'm going to keep one open. You know, when you harvest, um, like I harvested my garlic, that opened that up. Um, I harvested a bunch of onions, that opened that up. I have two more beds of onions, so I'm going to be pulling a lot of those. And so I will be planting some more carrots for a fall harvest. Um... I want to do Brussels sprouts and I am going to start some more uh, cucumbers and as far as cabbage and that I, I might do a couple cabbage plants in a container um, as far as my fall planting because right now is the time for us to do it anyhow in Northeast Ohio um, oh here is all the blackberries and they're starting to ripen up so in here I got uh, the black raspberries mixed with blackberries and the black raspberries came from the birds. And over here I have some more beans. That's one thing I want to do this year is can a bunch. Here's some extra tomatoes I had so I threw them in here, San Marzano. Here is the green stalk. And so here's the tiny bell pepper starting to um, form. Cinnamon basil, I've been pinching those off. And this was a tomato. When I planted it in here, I thought it was um, a tiny Tim, but it's not. But it does look like some kind of cherry, I'm thinking. And I just left it in here. I'm going to see what happens with it. I thought I could kind of see some striping on there. I don't know. Hmm, interesting. And I have some tiny chims in here. And a lot more beans right here. And I'm going to be picking all of these. I have been picking them and just eating them. But I think on this batch, I'm going to start freezing them to use like in baking, unless I make something up, like maybe strawberry muffins or something. These are the Alpine strawberries. <clears throat> to me, they're not my favorite because they're so little. I like these more. These are the Everbearing. And I'm getting the runners. I still have to put them in a pot connected to the mother plant so they can root before I separate them. All the calendula. These zinnias are starting to bloom. Abby, get out of there. And of course the butterfly. Okay, so it is really bright out. Um, but anyhow, so... Um, just wanted to share that about uh, trimming the male flowers. Uh, not all of them, you still need some for pollination. Um, put, hopefully um, push more energy to producing the female ones um, on your squash. And, um, but I am gonna fertilize everything. Uh, there was a thing going around where some people feel that you should not 
fertilize your tomatoes once you start getting them, which is not true. Um, I fertilize them, I don't know, at least every two weeks um, with some kind of fertilizer. And definitely have to water the um, cucumbers. And I'll be picking and chopping up a lot of the jalapenos so I could freeze them. Uh, I want to make cowboy candy, but they're just not all ready. Plus, I want to use some for salsa, but the tomatoes aren't quite ready. So <laughs> that's the one thing with gardening. It's like some things are go nuts and you're not ready for the recipe that you want to make because the other part of your uh, garden isn't ready yet. Um, I did plant some more um, cilantro. Looks like I got dill in there too. I hope so, because I want to make some pickles. Um, I do have some dill in, in the in ground, but it's not doing all that great. Um, so, anyhow, I hope your gardens are doing great. Um, you know, if you want to share how they're doing, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I always like to hear about other people's gardens. Um, we also have uh, the Facebook group, Flying by the Seed of My Plants. And there we could share photos of our produce, what's going on, if you have questions, concerns, um, questions about different bugs in your garden. Um, and there are a lot of knowledgeable gardeners in that group. So um, if you're interested, go ahead and you just request to join. It is a private group. So right now there's like 130, I think like 139 members in there. So it's not a huge group. And I'm not opening it to the public because then you start getting scammers in there. Um, but I mean, you could find it just by uh, put it, searching in Facebook, flying by the seed of my plants and just request to join. And there you are, we share recipes. Um, anyhow, so, all right, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you on the next one. All right, bye.